Hey everyone, this is Casey. Today I'm going to show you how to create the City Pop inspired shoe shader using Simmer 4D and Arnold. This one is heavily inspired by Eijin Suzuki's work. I really like the way he captures rich details in light and shadow. So let's break it down and see how we can achieve a similar look. First thing first, let's go to the render settings and choose Arnold as our renderer. In the sampling, I want to decrease the camera sampling a bit to save some time. Then I'm going to change the Gaussian filter to contour filter so that it will generate object contours for us. Under the ray depth section, I will get rid of all these fours because we don't want any global illumination. Meanwhile, I will keep the total and transparency at a low level. We will need transparency in this project. The last thing is to choose the project settings in the color manager. I'll also uncheck this one. And in our 740D project settings, make sure we have basic and sRGB here. My scene setup is pretty simple. I've got a car as the main object with some trees in the background. For lighting, I'm using the Arnold Distant Light, which you can grab from the Arnold Lights menu. My camera here has a long focal lens. This kind of camera can really flatten the perspective and give it a more 2D feeling. Alright, now that our scene is ready, let's dive into the shader itself. First, let's click on this icon and create a new material by going to Create, Create New Node Material, and then we can assign it to our car. Once we open it up, we can search for the Tune Surface node, which will generate a basic tune shader for us. Now, if we preview it in the IPR window, we'll see a default gray shader here. What I want to do next is remove the default base channel and instead use the emission channel for better control. Then I will search for utility node and set the shape mode to Lambert, which gives us a simple matte surface that reacts to the lights in our scene. After this one, I can have a ramp RGB node. Set its type to custom and change the interpolation to step. This instantly gives us that classic hard edged tune shading effect. I will add more knots and adjust the grayscale values to get the right contrast. Cool, if we plug this ramp back into the emission color, we can see it working nicely. I do want to add a color, but instead of manually adjusting all the knots here, I will use a layer RGBA node. Our ramp will be layer 1. And then I will enable layer 2 and add the color here. In this case, I want a saturated red, maybe like this. And then I can change the blending mode to multiply. Cool. Next, I'd like to add lines along the edges where the colors shift. We can do it really easily by feeding this ramp to the edge detection, mask color. Awesome. We can tune down the width scale a bit, like this. I also want to adjust the angle threshold a bit. For example, we can focus on this wheel section. When the value decreases, there are more details and the lines become more complete. So I'm going to set it to something like 20. It's looking good but I feel like these transitions are still too smooth, so I like to add some displacement. Let's search for a Sima 40 noise, and I will use a blistered turbulence. It will be cool to adjust the size and make it look like something like this. I'm gonna plug this one into the color of the utility node. 
basically, we are using this noise to remap the utility. We can tell the default color of this utility node is white. This probably gets too dark. So for a better results, I actually want to invert this noise first. Cool. We can further adjust some parameters of this noise and also try some different C's to get the look we want. Okay, now this looks good to me. After this, I duplicate this material several times, adjust the colors and noise, and assign them to different selections. One thing I do want to mention is the sky material. I don't want our light to influence the sky. So I'm gonna delete this utility thread and use this U-type RAM as the layer 1 directly. For layer 2, I got this kind of horizontally stretched noise here to serve as the mask. Then I can set a light blue color for it. This way we can get this kind of smaller clouds in the distance. Okay, now I've assigned a blue material to the windows. Of course, we want to make this transparent. But the problem is, I don't see any option to control opacity in Arnold's tune surface. So my workaround is to add a standard surface node. Remove both the base and the specular. And in the geometry's cutout opacity, set the color to black. Now let's mix tune surface and standard surface together by adding a mix shader node. Our tune can go to shader 1 and standard surface goes to shader 2. This blend mode can work as well, but I'm going to use add mode for this. Now our windows are transparent while the mullions still keep the blue, which looks great. Moving on to the big clouds, I'm very lazy, so just want to go with a super simple method. I found this anime cloud image on Adobe Stock, and I used Photoshop to cut out two clouds to make textures. I made two maps, one for base color and one for opacity. I have two square plans and I position them towards the back. Start with this cloud one. What we can do is to duplicate the window material we got earlier. And drag our cloud textures into its node editor. We can preview our texture and check its positioning. The opacity map goes to standard surface, geometry, cutout opacity. Looking good. The base color map will go to our ramp input. We don't need to use a utility node because the map itself already has changes in light and shadow. I reset this ramp to default and drag the black to the right to increase contrast. The next step is to tweak the blending mode and the color so that we can get a saturated white and blue cloud. For Cloud 2, we just need to swap the texture of Cloud 1 with Cloud 2's. And that's it. As always, you can download my project files, link in the description below. And that's all for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.